we can uh, we can now introduce to the industry the feeder pocket calculator. And like I said, Chip Kemp um, is going to give you a quick. We only have a, I guess 15, 20 minutes. Give you a quick update and and demo on the feeder profit calculator. And he's been doing a lot of demos. This is a popular. Um, this is a very popular part of the IGS program. So here's Chip. First, thank you. Second, I don't like that podium, so I'll just stand out here with you. Three, now you know why they had to get some new blood into the office. It was getting way, way off kilter. And so um, I don't know what it means by new blood um, coming from Missouri. Um, Rick spoke a little bit about line breeding. Um, uh, you take it however you would, okay? All right. Somewhere around here, Jack, you have a tool for me. All right. So about this time last year, we were just into the initial stages of the resurgence of this tool. And we'd be remiss if we didn't recognize that, as Wade uh, mentioned, that, that this was an endeavor that started a long time ago. Let's, let's face it, this is, this is the holy grail of our industry, to be frank with you, is to get folks on the, in the marketing and on the feedlot side of our thing to have some appreciation and utilization of genetics. Again, I think most of you are aware of this, but if you're not, if we pull together the folks who run the largest feed yards in the country, and in fact, um, back so many months ago when we were talking about this tool, had a gentleman who ran, oh, I won't say who it was, but you saw some pictures up here earlier from uh, Dr. Funston, um, who, who ran that feeding effort. And he was excited about such a tool because he makes no bones about it that essentially ear length and shape and height color is a proxy for genetic awareness in the feedlot industry and mass. And so if we can help make genetics real on that end, folks like yourself have worked so long and so hard to put in profit potential on your side of the business. Are there things we can do different, better? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, if we can't get the folks with the pull through to help us a little bit, there's a bottleneck that's hard to get past. And so this tool was, when it was envisioned uh, by my former colleague, Will Townsend and Wade, they had a vision and, and, a, and a concept, and Wade uses it a lot, and I love the terminology and I use it frequently. The goal was to provide pervasive awareness of feeder calf value. What does that mean? That means get it in the open marketplace where people can truly know what your calf is worth, from a feedlot predictability standpoint, but what's mine's worth? That means I have the potential to capture a little more value, and the buyer has a chance to invest in a bit of a higher product. So, about this time last year, we went to hustling. Um, myself, along with uh, uh, Jordan Bowman, one of our colleagues on the programming side, Wade's help, Dr. Spangler's help, and a few other folks along the way uh, have helped us. And so, about oh, some number of weeks ago now, mid-July, this thing went live with a soft launch. We didn't make much noise about it, uh, and since that time, it has started getting quite a bit of traction. So let's talk a little bit about what the feeder profit calculator is meant to do. We all know this, it's not a shock. There's a lot we have to learn, but the question is, is why? Sometimes I think we think too small, okay? Now you have to be in the here and now, and you gotta think about what you have to do to be around next year. But I'm gonna guess a little later in the day when we hear Dr. Spangler dream just a little bit, or when we hear a guest speaker a little bit later that I think is gonna talk about some things that might make us, look, might shake us up just a little bit. We've gotta realize there's some big pressures coming on us and if we can't accept that, then we're just not gonna move forward. Group that buys a lot of cap. When they started the launch of investing in non-meat alternatives, not, that's just an observation of the truth, okay? You've heard it even later. They, they can 3D print meat. You saw one a few weeks ago that NCBA sent out. The folks are making uh, beef in a lab. Don't think that's not real. There are folks with serious efforts there. Things like, whoa, this, legal stuff, or this. 
I've shown this slide, I think, to some of the trustees, and I know you can't read all the things at the bottom, so let me go ahead and just explain it to you. It is very simple. It's how much meat animal protein we consume. And if we go right back to the left, it gets over to about 65, and if we come to this side, it gets almost to present day. And here's what I would say is the big takeaway. You look at the top, that's the dark blue, that's seafood. It's gone up a little bit percentage-wise, but we still don't eat very much. You look at the yellow, that's turkey. It's actually, percent-wise, has grown a lot but it's still a relatively small component of our diet. The orange, that's pork. We apparently like pigs because it stayed pretty static through that time. Here's what we have to understand, and this is important for us to see. When I was a wee bit, we'll just go to when I was four years old. When I was four years old, 1976, is there a, really? Okay. Somewhere right in here, okay? It's about our highest consumption of beef in this country. We were eating nearly 100 pounds of beef per capita in this country. And simultaneously, at the same time, we were eating somewhere in the ballpark of the mid-30s in terms of poundage of chicken we consume. Now, fast forward to today. Not that long in the grand scheme of things, even though I have a lot of gray in my beard. We went from nearly 100 pounds per capita consumption to about 50 of beef. On the other hand, we went from about in the low 30s on chicken to roughly 100. We have to recognize that we have to step up our game if we're gonna play ball with these people. Because way too often, I, my, I think about my competition is the guy selling bulls down the road. And in the immediate future, he is. But at the same time, he's my ally to help battle this. And if I don't recognize that and we don't band together to develop tools like the profit calculator, we will be stuck. I used this once a while back and I love this. I said it in a meeting uh, to some of my colleagues, I think the book Moneyball, maybe not the movie, I don't really care, but the book Moneyball should be mandatory reading if you're a member of ASA. I'll let you read it later. I don't have time to make any sense. I'll make sense to you. It's about sports. So if you like sports, you can justify that. Um, so there you go. It's a quick and easy read. But in there, when the author, Michael Lewis, is uh, speaking about some comments, and actually this is a quote that he kind of paraphrases from um, Paul D. Podesta, which is one of the, the subjects of the book, or the movie. He says a statement to me that is really important because how many times, and we're all guilty of it, I guarantee you I am too, I'll go out and look at a cow and I think, oh, I can remember everything about her. Oh, I can remember, right? I know what she did. No. I can remember the outliers, right? I can remember the unique things, good or bad, but I can't remember everything she did. And it's the same here. Folks who did this for a living, scouts who got paid serious money to watch baseball players play a game and thought they could tell the difference between a kid who's supposed to be a great one and a kid who's just a schmuck. And this guy says, I'm gonna put dollars to it, put numbers to it, and the reality is you can't tell a lick of a difference between somebody who's at 300, who's a major leaguer, and at 275, is probably gonna live in triple. So, we all think we have information. I know I think I do, right? I got numbers, okay? I get a lot of numbers. It's only information if I utilize it. Up until then, it's just noise. Things that clutter me and give me headaches. And so, we gotta have tools, right? And so, you heard a good conversation earlier of, can we get caught in the weeds on certain pieces of female longevity, or can we use overarching figures, tools, that can help us identify. For example, we heard Wade's comments on stability versus some of the others. There is a very reason for a very practical tool that you can implement very well. So, we need tools. If I take my dad to a place like this, we are done for the day. This is actually a picture of him when, when he comes in, okay? And that is all we do, okay? We stand there and oogle. He loves it. And so, or we can think of pretty important tools. This is some artist's rendition of what? Printing press. Gutenberg's printing press, circa 1400. Change the world, you can find that later if you want. Um, or a tool like this. This is more a tool that my mind can understand and appreciate, okay? I can save my own little world on regular occasion with this, okay? Regardless, oh, this is an homage to the boss. Um, again, Something that we might think is recreation is in fact a tool, right? If you were at certain periods of time, this particular tool allowed you to drink liquid safely. And 
an homage to our colleague Monty. Yes, I know it didn't actually start in Egypt. It started in the Fertile Crescent. So it's not lost on me, but we, we realize the importance of beer as a tool. So to our point, our job is to try to help you develop pieces, technology, tools to be able to move your deal forward. So let's talk a little bit about this thing we call the profit cap. I, to preface what we'll go through the next little bit, we will be giving a couple other talks over the next couple days, and they will be much more down and dirty, let's play with the tool talks, okay? And so, I love that. So should I not touch on some of the behind the scenes stuff that you'd like to talk more about? Certainly you're willing to ask the question. And by the way, don't wait for me to shut up to ask that question. Just raise your hand in the moment because I'm probably not gonna stop talking, okay? So Gary, just throw your hand up and say, answer the other question, okay? But we will spend a couple more times talking about this in the next couple days. And if you have specific questions and you want to grab me by the collar or pull me in the corner and talk about it, enthusiastic to do that. So this is a bit more of a 30,000 foot view of the IGS profit calculator. This is really the, the key component. It's going to take your known genetics. For some of you, that means on your place. But for many of you receipt stock folks, the big picture of this is for you to help identify these bulls at your commercial customers. This is both direct sires and maternal grandsires if we can do it. Also, some basic management and herd health pieces. And what I mean by that, our good friends Dave Wallman and, and also Max Bangler helped with this effort who you'll hear from later. They dang it, dug into a fair amount of the data um, and essentially they can assign values for mortality and morbidity associated with a couple pieces that um, that we highlight. One is, is it cat weaned for more than 30 days? And one is that cat that was vaccinated for BRD. If they can do those things, we can be pretty confident in the mortality level and more morbidity that, uh, level of that cat. Here's a step that makes this tool somewhat different than any other tool in the marketplace who tries to get at this particular effort. We can actually get an understanding of what your cow herds do. Okay? There isn't some static snapshot of, a, of an average cow herd. If you know your maternal grandsires, we can reflect the value you've built into your herd over time, or the lack of value as it might be. If you don't know your maternal grandsires, we can still get a pretty good stat by using breed estimates. So we can do some things on the cow herd side that frankly can't be done in other places. That's a, this is just mostly shameless advertising. Um, so when you have 18 million head in your database and that makes you the largest genetic evaluation on the planet, and it's not even close. You know who the second biggest one is? Well, let me be clear. Number wise, not even close. And that's all multi breed cross breed stuff too. So it's stuff that actually works for your commercial client, just saying. We also use some ARC data when we need to. We also use IGS data to get some breed differences. If you don't know our science team, you're gonna to get to meet more of them. You've already heard from Wade a couple times. You'll hear from him much more over the next number of days. You're gonna to to, get to listen to Bonnie and Lauren. Um, I'm sure Steve has his spot at some point. You are gonna to get to hear from some of the best minds. And Matt Spangler is one of our consultants, so he's involved um, a great deal as well. This is an important place to clarify. We do this free of charge to somebody, a producer who wants a third party validation of the feedlot profitability and the carcass profitability of their calves, no cost. But I also want you to understand, and I think it's important for folks to know, because people do get suspicious when I give them something for free, right? They're like, yeah, no, you can go ahead and keep that three legged one testicle bull. I'm good, but thanks. There is a cost. It's a very distinct cost. You bear that, okay? Progressive savvy seed stock producers who are willing to invest in this industry and invest in the success of their commercial clients, you bear this cost. So there is a cost. But because of the model that you all have put in place at ASA, we have the courage to do something that no other breed association would even dream to consider. And that is actually make genetics real for your commercial client. This is that cow piece, just to kind of throw this a little bit further in, let's just assume that I didn't have a tool that could reflect cow I, I would have to assume that 
maybe the, the, the marbling ability of your calendar was some static number, right? Well, again, let's just say you've invested and you've made that better and the marbling in your calendar is a little bit better. Now we can use the red line as your predictor. And why is that important? Because wherever these discounts or premiums are, we have to build these into the equations, okay? So if I use this black line, there's what? Seven, eight percent out in that tail that are gonna get a discount of about eight bucks in this particular model. On the other hand, if I get out here in the red line to the right, you can see now there's about a similar equivalent that's gonna get a bump for about for, for 12 bucks. So I need to be able to accurately reflect that bell-shaped curve. This is the way the profit calculator looks. This is the this is where it starts to get real. So what we're doing is behind the scenes, we're using your known genetics. We're using your management practices and your health practices to predict biology. And then we take those predictions of biology and we turn them into three easy numbers. Now, I've had folks tell me, oh, Chip, we need, we need more data on the sheet. Yeah, no, you Because at the end of the day, less is more, right, Michael? Um, if we can make this simple and implementable and real, it makes sense. And also, when I talk to the marketers, they'll tell me, give me one number I can work with. I don't need any more. Good for you, sir. These are the three numbers that we will generate that are important. I'll show you an example here in a moment. Relative management value. Again, what are we doing? We are, predi we are predicting a deviation or a break-even de deviation from the average cap. What is our average cap or management practices? We are assuming that 60% of the calves in the industry are vaccinated for BRD and 60% of the calves in the industry are weaned for more than 30 days. Now, you might argue that that's a bad assumption. You might be right, in your region I might be low, we might be high. But just so you know, that's our base, okay? That's from what we do. Our relative genetic value, again, is a break-even deviation from what we view to be a close representation of the average animal in the, in the industry. And I think we all know that animal's gonna be heavily Angus influenced. We actually look at the average genetic Ang Angus genetic profile as our base. So, we combine those two together, and that gives our one number total relative value. How would somebody participate and partake of this? Pretty simple. Many folks have already done it. You go to the International Genetic Solutions website. At the top of that page up there on the right, there's a little link. You probably can't read it from where you're at. It says, Feed your Profit Calculator. Should you have a customer who's been buying cattle from you for a while, and you're just like, yeah, we'll take a step. All they gotta do is click on this. It'll take them to a very simple little input sheet. It'll probably take them 20 minutes to put in the data. There are exceptions, Jim and Butcher, um, but for most folks, 20 minutes will knock this thing down. They send that in, they push submit, and within three days, usually much quicker than that, they get a certificate back. That certificate would look something like this. I show this certificate to you, for one, because I want you to see one, and two, this is actually the first certificate we ever generated. And I told this story last night to the reps, and I told a few other folks, um, and I'm not going to give the individual's name of uh, who sent this in, but it, it would appear that this individual must have been waiting to see when the profit calculator was going to go live, Bob, because within mere moments of this thing becoming functional, I get, boom, input on some cattle from an individual that everybody in here knows. That individual's not here, so don't look at your name, okay? For I haven't seen it here. And so... Because of who this individual was, I thought, wow, there must be a test. But that's okay, let's see, let's see where we do. I failed a lot of tests in my life, what's one more? So I do this certificate, we do the one. It predicts the biologies and it puts this certificate. And I know you can't really see from where you're at, but let me tell you what it's given, okay? At the top, it's blocked out, but that's all the producer information, okay? All the contact information, how you find this person. Below that, it's also blocked out the address of where the cattle are. In this case, it's the same place, hence the race there blocked out. So many of you might recognize that particular address. In that same box there on the left, everything from the number of head of calves in this particular group, the delivery date, the wean date, the breed composition, this particular set of calves is 48% Angus, 35% Simmental, the balance red Angus. It also gives us their pole, their black and red, their steers, weight ranges, so on and so forth. Below that, we have a region that has all of our vaccinations, dewormings, and implants. Essentially, everything, no, there's no essentially, it's trash. Everything you give, and from an information standpoint, will go on this certificate. You are on your own. 
And so we put everything out there because that's the way we do things. We try not to hide anything behind a black curtain. Now, on the right, you see some stars. They are essentially proxy measures for the biology predictions. But the big deal here are those relative values. And so my last comment about this one. So when I sent it back to the gentleman, I said, did I pass the test? He said, I like that. He said, those numbers look accurate. But he said, you need to know something. These feeder cats all died two months ago as fat cattle. He said, "These were this is all the data from last year. So, okay. How did we do? So we made a horse trade. I actually told him the actual biological predictions that are driving this thing, and he gave me the actual data. Here's the result. On this particular pin, the very first pin we ever did through the profit calculator, um, when we look at uh, carcass weight, we were six pounds heavy. We look at percent choice, we were one and a half percent higher than he was. We called it 92, he called it 90, they, they were 90 and a half. You agree they were all main cattle, so it really wasn't much difference. Um, average daily gain, we were different by 17 hundredths of a pound. Conversion, we were different by 12 hundredths of a pound. <laughs> what do you do with that, right? That'll work. Now, I, I reminded him the next time I'll fail miserably, it will not work out that. But the interesting piece was his follow-up to me was, not only is that impressive, he said, you need to know one more piece. He said, there was some illness going through the yard. And so to avoid any of that problem, we shipped him about a week early. He said, your numbers are probably closer even than what you think. So here's a couple quick examples. I know you can't read some of this stuff, but because at ASA we don't do stuff behind the curtain, we want you to see what we're doing. For those of you who are close enough, otherwise you can come look at the computer, otherwise you can come catch me later. But I want you to see what this is. On the left is the interface that we would use as a staff standpoint. Producer would never have to see it. But what it's asking, there's a whole bunch of things it's asking, but it's, I'm putting in gender, weights, there's some prices for yardage and feed cost and things like that. But here's what I want to highlight. Here's the educational component of this tool. There's four great bars. What you can't really read what those are, but what those are, are the inputs of four sides. One, upgrade, the other one is shear force, and the other two are walking sons of upgrade shear force. Okay, that's my sire battery, that's my bull battery. And below that, essentially, it's asking me some questions. Do you know the maternal grand sires? I do not in this particular example, but I do know that in this particular example, they're all balance or cats, so red eggs, yellow and cats. Okay, I want you to see that this can work with any breed type for your commercial clients. One thing that you need to know, and it's crucial, is up here there is a box that says, are they waiting for 30 days or are they vaccinated for BRD? And that, those boxes are not checked on this screen. So we've not done our job from a health and management standpoint. And so what's happened is we've invested in good bulls. But, and if you see the, the, the relative genetic value, it predicts these cattle from a genetic standpoint are worth $4.50 more than the average calf in the industry. But because we didn't do our homework from a management standpoint, I'm backwards nine bucks and can't get over that, okay? Now, let's add some awareness, shall we? Same set of sires, we still didn't vaccinate them, we still didn't wean them early, but this time I know a few maternal grandsires from that Red Angus Yelby deal. I've got some Nebula, I've got some Carolina Fortune, I've got some Freedom, prominent bulls if you happen to know those populations at all. So, somewhat reflective of real world situations. I have even enhanced my genetic value more. I still can't overcome the fact that I did not handle management. Let's go one step farther. And let's just go ahead and hypothetically say we'll go ahead and give them a few shots and we'll wean the calves. Using that same genetic profile, you can see immediately that these calves, by our predictions, from a break even standpoint, are worth $14 more per hundred to the buyer. To be clear, that buyer has no interest in paying you $14 more so he can break even. Okay? He's not going to do that. But you at least now have a third party that says these calves are worth more than the other calves on the other side of the fence that you know nothing about. Can we go a little farther than the same monies? Okay? Our hope is we can, we can leverage this and push your dollars up a little bit higher. I also want to show you because we have to be realistic. We know that the Sim Angus deal is about as hot as anything is. Why? There are probably no two breeds that complement any themselves better than those two cattle. Just the way things are. And so we have, if this tool couldn't accurately reflect most breed types, and it can accurately reflect almost every breed type with the exception of the major eared breeds in the South because of some ways they handle data, 
That's a bridge built across the near future. So I'm just going to real quickly across the top three very prominent Angus bulls to show to you that this can work. These are bulls that some of you might know, Gardner's Momentum Bull, Face and Payweight Bull, two pretty prominent bulls on the AI side, uh, Keneally Power Surge, another Select Sires Bull. And also, you can't see from where you're at, but they're weighted now. Before, again, to show you the refinement of the tool that you pay for, I've decided because we had a Funkston must have done my AI because I got 80% on these. And 40% of those are assigned to momentum, 40% to pay weight. And so the power surge cleanup bull only had to get 20% of the gas. I can refine it that tight. Now, I come down, let's just look at some basic breed types. This is if I put these same set of really good bulls on a set of unknown baldy calves. 12 bucks. Straight Angus calves, essentially the same money. Why? No heterosis at all. And we know that Angus cattle tend to get a little bit heavier condition. The Herefords actually turn them up a little bit, so the bald and the straight blocks are about the same. This is an unknown Sim Angus herd. We're at about 1475. Now, let's add some awareness. Sim Angus bulls on a little bit of knowledge about some Sim Angus females. Again, I know that you can't read these, but I want you to believe me that these are relatively contemporary bulls. I'm not just going out and getting some cool ones out of the database to make this thing dance and sing. So here's the bulls that are up there. Uh, again, it's Sim Angus, so there's Gardner Prophet, there's Bismarck, and there's Final Answer. On the city side, it's Beat King, United, and Cowboy Cat. Pretty contemporary bulls. You can see that number. I know you can't see it. It's 1824. We've gone up six bucks by putting Sim Angus into this deal. Now let's make them straight half blood calves. One last time, those same bulls on an unknown Simitol base, 16 and a half bucks. Those same bulls on straight city cows, nearly $20 a hundred more over the average Angus calf in this industry who's 60% weaned and 60% vaccinated. Heterosis works, an independent tool that is open to whatever the science says it is, shows that over and over and over. And interestingly enough, what you probably can't see from where you're at, is this thing consistently says, if we vaccinate and we weed these gas, we're gonna be somewhere on the plus side of about five and a half to six dollars in advantage for herd health. That number is derived purely from the data, okay? We didn't go to the free market and say, what should this number be? We let the science tell us about the mortality and morbidity. And the interesting piece, where would we find probably the largest set of value of herd, of animal health in our industry? Probably at Superior. They probably have the largest reservoir of knowledge of value. And interestingly enough, the free market says that if I get a calf at a VAC 45, guess what Superior says they're worth? Oh, about five to six bucks extra. So it's interesting that the science bears that out. One other thing I want to show you about this, and again, I know it's small. I don't know how to solve all that for you, but I want you to see. I can talk you through it. On the left, you see a certificate. I know you can't read it other than you're confident it's a certificate. But every one of you does a certificate, every one of your customers will actually get two pages. One is the certificate you saw already. But with every single one, there's a second page that shows the genetics involved. We hold nothing back. We're going to show everything we got. And so on this one, while you can't see it necessarily, is the universal ID for two Simitol bulls. Over here, it says the cow herd is unknown, but I know that they're half Angus, and the other half is a mix of red Angus Simitol. Okay? This is what it looks like, and this one is a mix of Simitol bulls and a bunch of Simitol maternal grandsires going back from year three to year 11. Your one and two don't matter for my females, right? Because they haven't made me cash yet. So I can make this thing one bull on an unknown cow, or the largest certificates we've done to this point, did one what, about a week and a half ago, a little over a thousand bulls. And we can go into those thousand bulls, and you can tell me that four years ago, these two bulls made up 50% of my females. And the other 107 bulls that are in that bull battery were walking bulls, and so we can equally weigh them, okay? This tool has a level of refinement and awareness that doesn't exist elsewhere. So I'll click through a couple of those just so you can see them. That's just getting more expensive. We can input bulls from essentially any breed type. They do not have to be within the IGS system. And so I would uh, 
I would encourage you to look at this more. This is not something that you can go through easily from a distance in 30 minutes, but I wanted to show you what this tool is about so that if you have an opportunity to come to one of the smaller sessions tomorrow, I'd encourage you to do that. We can sit down and we can play with it. If you really want to get serious and you would like to see what some real world examples from your own place, if you have 20 minutes to see them in the hotel room, go to the website, put in some caps. I'll pull them up tomorrow. I can't do everybody, so FYI, everybody put yours in. Not gonna happen, okay? But I can cherry pick a few, and we can get this done for you tomorrow. We can even see some real, okay? And we'll interact with it live tomorrow on some of the other sessions. So that's what we do. Uh, that's the IGS feeder profit calculator. Um, we are very, very um, appreciative that you all support our efforts to give these kind of tools to your commercial customers. And trust me, when you talk to the commercial cattlemen and cattlewomen and you show them this thing the first time and they realize, I, I did just a few days ago, I was in the middle of 200 people, Steve, 200 commercial folks, and they were all brought together by a couple of seed stock folks. And when those people realize they have access to this free of charge because of the other folks that were on the edge of the room that were essentially paying the bills, that's customer service that, frankly, not most, most folks can provide. So that's it. I'll be quiet. If you have questions, I'll take them, or you can wait until the end of a couple of colleagues talk and we'll come back.